We're here tonight with our neighborhood Blue Jay, and what's your strategy tonight, Mr. Blue Jay? Well, uh, I got this beak, and I'm gonna be like, click, click, click. Oh, okay. No, no, Mr. Blue Jay, come over here. You're fight. We were still in an interview. Hi, I'm the hungry biologist. I'm a University of Florida student who does research, and I have discovered that after a while of telling people what I did, that people loved it. And so I decided to make a show, and it's put together of special clips for kids. Maybe you'll learn something in the process, and you'll want to go and be the next generation of people in our field. So here's our show. Hope you enjoy. Now, in optimum forage theory, they're trying to explain why an animal chooses an, something to eat over not choosing something to eat. And this is very easy to explain. You don't go around eating ants. They don't, not because they're gross. People eat ants all over the world. But the thing is, is you don't eat ants because it's not worth your risk to get stung and eat a bunch of ants. When you can go to a store and eat pizza. Now, pizza gives you more resources because of the carbohydrates and the proteins and, and the dairy that's in it that gives you sugar. But why don't you eat a grasshopper or a cockroach? Or why aren't you going out and hunting deer? The reason is, is it's easier to eat the pizza. And the same thing is for nature. They go around finding things that they can eat with the lowest risk value, the lowest expendable energy that they can eat. Do you always go after insects, Mr. Blue Jay? No, 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 insects. Yeah, I like insects. Kind of like an omnivore, you know? I'll eat a bug. I'll eat some nuts. I'll eat, I'll eat. No, no, Mr. Blue Jay, your, your fight is over here. Your right, fight right, is... right, right, right. That's okay, food, that's good. Right here. Take it over here. Fruit, nuts, I'll eat it. What? I'll eat it. <laughs> Looks like Mr. Blue Jay is ready to get out there. The Blue Jay was always moving around. It was always looking for food. It eats nuts and berries and is an omnivore. That means it eats both plants and animals. It uses everything it could do to eat so it can get that energy, so it could give it to its young, so the young can grow old. What happened? I don't know. He just he wouldn't be still. You know, he kept moving around and moving around and moving around. And, you know, I don't got all day to mess with that. Oh, oh. what? So, why didn't you want to keep messing with him? What? I thought you were hungry. I mean, I'll find like some other stuff to eat, you know? I don't want this tiny bug. I don't got all day to try to eat a tiny bug. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Wow. Amazing. That's because it perceived that the risk to expend all of its energy wasn't worth that it was gaining to get the energy from the bug. And that is optimum forage theory. This next clip, I want to introduce my friend Nick. He wants to be a herpetologist and he's from the University of Florida. And I want you to think, what does this have to do with optimum forage theory? How has this animal adapted its body to either A, not be eaten, or B, how to eat? Enjoy the clip. All right, well, what I do is I work on some conservation land called Negosi Plantation, and I work a lot with reptiles and amphibians. What do you got there, Nick? This here is a little baby spiny soft shell turtle. These turtles like flowing streams like this one right here. They're highly active predators. Uh, they're gonna do mostly in the morning and evening though, and there's not so much exposure out. Oh, he's so soft. Yep, very flimsy shell. Uh, helps him blend into the sand. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and let this little spiny soft shell go. You gonna see what he does to hide? The burrowing in the sand like that. And his head, he's looking right there. He'll stick his head up there, he'll grab some fish. Uh, that size they really like invertebrates. Yeah, he's gonna sit there like that. And that's how they hide. And if you weren't looking and you didn't know where it was, you could hardly tell it was even there. <laughs> He's so cute. Yeah, they're a real fun one. As a small disclaimer, I wanted to state, if you see this turtle out in the wild, please only take pictures and don't touch. Have you enjoyed what you've seen? You could read more about it, and here's some literature.
Hi there. If you love the natural world as much as we do, we recommend this book, The Sand County Almanac by Alder Leopold. In it are some of his essays and reflections about nature. Let me read you some. That land is a community is the basic concept of ecology, but that land is to be loved and respected is an extension of ethics. That land yields a cultural harvest is a fact long known but latterly often forgotten. Hungry by all this production.